Welcome to Bird Barrier Live Training. My name is Michael Gallion, and today we're going to be talking about sparrows. Sparrows are, I'm going to admit this, they're my least favorite <laughs> bird in bird control. And here's the reason why. Uh, they can really mess up uh, a lot of good bird control people, and especially in the pest control world. And what I mean by that, by messing them up, is get them caught in an area where their, their profitability can be a challenge. And I want everyone out there to, you know, have success with solving these birds. Uh, this is the last of the six bird series that we did on pest birds for now. Uh, you know, grackles and some of the other birds are gonna be discussed next week. More in, in you know, since grackles are so unique to uh, outdoor eating areas, then we're making that the feature bird with the outdoor eating areas uh, webcast that we're going to be doing, and that will be with Cameron Riddell next week. But sparrows, I, I feel bad when I see somebody, you know, going into great lengths to try to solve a couple sparrows in a warehouse, and you know they have to put all this investment of time and energy when the end customer. You know, they just think of it as any other bird. Oh, get those birds out of the warehouse. And meanwhile, I'm just going to leave the door wide open and let it be your problem. And at the end of the day, it may not even be profitable to get involved with it. Now, I'm not saying that profit is the only driving factor. But if you're in business, you, you have to be profitable. You cannot take a loss to solve sparrows. Now, sometimes sparrows are a necessary evil to the general pest account. So you're in charge of the pest control safety of an entire food plant. You're darn right it's your responsibility to get those sparrows out because that's a violation of a, a food uh, law and therefore you have to learn how to do that and there are ways to, to solve these birds. But I like pigeons a lot better. Everybody does very well with pigeons. They're 90% of the problem and a lot easier to solve. But let's get into it with these sparrows. Hopefully this would be helpful to you to learn about how to solve these birds. I think most of us know what a sparrow looks like. Uh, these are the birds that are small and you'll see 30 or 40 of them at a time. Rarely will you just see a few of them. Let's uh, take a quick look at this five interesting facts about sparrows and you can see these birds in action. Of course, there's your classic, uh, again, native of Europe, European sparrow. There are about 35 different species in North America, right? We compare that to pigeons, which is really, they're really one species that dominate. Where sparrows, there can be many variations. The good thing about sparrows, they all act the same when they become pests. They do a lot of the same things. Therefore, your solution is very similar. They tend to be cavity dwellers, you know, in terms of their nesting, uh, very social. You know, they all chirp constantly and communicate with each other and their families, and they stick together as a group, primarily carnivorous, so they live off of, of bugs and insects that they can find, but they definitely love spillage of seeds, as we know in any kind of uh, big box retail store. If they have seed for sale, these darn birds will find them, or any kind of food waste that comes up. There you go, they, they don't live too long. We got one that made it all the way to the age of 16. Somebody kept a bird for that long. That's pretty amazing. Um, they are very, they're probably the second most common pest bird that, you know, that I see that we get phone calls on uh, right after the pigeon. Uh, Non-native, not protected, remove their eggs, remove their nest, trap them out, get them out of the site. You won't get into any kind of trouble. But true to form with any of these birds, we don't want to harm them, especially in front of the customer. If you do trap out these birds, uh, the worst thing you can do is release them, especially near the area. They'll just go right back to wherever you trap them out of, unless it was just a temporary anomaly. If you're at a property where most of the birds are nesting outside and they're dealing with spillage on the exterior of a building, Occasionally, they go in and explore and they get trapped in a building. Sometimes you can trap those one or two that are just a random occurrence, and then they join, rejoin the rest of the flock. If you see nesting or that they're drawn to food inside that store, 
then you don't want to just release these birds if you trap them, but you don't want to harm them in any way in front of the customers. At Bird Barrier, everything we do is backed by the Humane Society. Nothing we do will harm birds. None of our products will harm birds. And uh, so you trap some out, you can take them to the local Humane Society, and they'll take them from you for a minor donation. That could be a good way to go in terms of your PR and your customer uh, happiness on the situation. Sparrows can lead to long-term challenges. So when you see this sort of nesting, like if you go in, if I go into a facility and I see a small nesting site that just started, man, the, the goal is to get rid of that thing right away and make sure you figure out how they got into the store or into this warehouse. Because once the seven that come from that nest start circulating around, they're going to be conditioned to be interior birds. And if they mix with other parts of the population, you can have 40 of these birds inside of a facility within a year, and it becomes much harder to solve. So with these birds, prevention is such a key, if you can. They cause property damage, and as I mentioned, in the food production industry, these create a lot of problems. If the inspector or auditor comes and they see just one sparrow flying through, they can shut down that food facility until that bird is gone. And so that's going to be on you to figure out how to get rid of that bird. They cause health risk. If the bird droppings were to fall in some and contaminate some of that food, people can get very sick. So we can have recalls just from a few sparrow droppings to get into the mix. So it's very serious. The good thing is that they have what we call a moderate reclaim instinct. So if they're nesting in a cavity like we see in this photo here, and uh, we exclude them from that cavity using PVC coated mesh, let's say for example, these birds will not spend a whole lot of time trying to reclaim that cavity. If you do it right, they're not like some of the bigger birds that will pry and peck and spend a few weeks trying to figure out how to get in there. They will spend a few minutes investigating and if it's clean right and you've, you've done a good job of, of uh, getting rid of any pheromone imprint and all the nesting, then they, they just move away. The, the entire colony makes a decision together. They have to figure out where they're gonna live. They typically will go back to uh, bushes and trees. Now this is an important part of bird control I want to mention. I haven't really brought this up before in my other sessions. But if you, if you have a situation like in the springtime where you know these birds are going to come back, it's better to exclude them at times where they have a better chance of surviving outside of that little cavity. So if we do this in the middle of winter, you're going to create a pressure problem where they're going to have a higher tendency to reclaim. So think about things like that whenever you can, when you're going to exclude birds from their nesting especially. You want to do it at the right time. Sometimes it's better to come back at, at a different time of year, and that's something we can help you with as well. It depends on where you are located. I know we have people all over the place here today, and it all depends on your weather patterns in your area. The imprinting comes from the droppings. Uh, you know, uh, this, is a, this is a spot where you can just see they're staging and they're getting up in that cavity behind there. They transition into what are called resident birds. Uh, there can be a lot of sparrows around the, the property, but the ones that are getting in the cavities and nesting are the true residents that you need to put your focus on. Seven eggs per nest made out of straw material. They use very lightweight material and typically they bring it through very narrow openings. Anything three quarter of an inch or larger is enough for them to squeeze through and build a nest inside. The offspring grow very fast. So within about you know, three weeks, you've got you know, a whole set of seven more and they could do three of those per year. So you're gonna have up to over 20 birds that are generated from a mating pair. So that's something to consider with these birds. Man, things happen very fast. Here's another picture of their droppings. We're gonna show you a quick video here that's pretty interesting that we did from some research. What's that? 
Yeah, let's go ahead, Zach, and, and let's show this video. What we did is we set up a time lapse of a sparrow after it was trapped. Of course, it did have food and water available. And this is 24 hours, just 24 hours. And this is the amount of droppings that get generated just from one sparrow. Now, the thing about sparrow droppings like this is that they don't fall in a way that like pigeon droppings or crows or seagulls where it's, they seem to get right in where the human most, uh, you know, is affected by it. The sparrow droppings tend to just be confined to their nesting areas and up high. So we don't see a whole lot of droppings unless there's a staging area. So if we go back to this picture of the droppings that I have here on this slide, this is underneath a staging spot where birds are making their way to and from their nesting. And those are good clues to understand what's going on. So when we see these droppings, again, make sure you take good photos before you clean anything up. Even, you know, on your visits, you know, take photos before you clean up droppings. Whenever you take a photo of droppings like this, you, you're going to hold the camera down on the droppings, and then you're going to go straight up above whatever that structure is above. So make sure you have eye protection. <laughs> you can take a a shot right to the face if you're not careful, if you get right under there. But you get the idea, wherever gravity is dropping that down, if I see droppings down here, you know, whatever's up above, straight above it is what I'm going to look for in terms of their... Has that ever happened to you? Uh, yes. Zach asks, has that ever happened? Yes, I have looked up and I've, and I've dodged it, though. I was able to dodge the droppings, but I've seen people that I've been with take it right in the face, you know, and they're, they're looking up, and the, as soon as the birds move, too, another thing that happens is the more dangerous than the wet droppings are the dry droppings. So if you're looking up in that area and then you see bird activity, just that little shuffling can cause little, little hard pellets of droppings to fall. And those are far more dangerous. If you get that in your eye, you're going to get uh, contamination right into your bloodstream that way. So that can be dangerous. As I mentioned before, we look at a photo like this. Um, you know, they're really fixated on this ledge here. We can see the amount of droppings is telling us how many birds there are and how much activity is going on. But they're probably not nesting on this ledge, so it's leading up to something that's important to these birds. And it could just be a ledge outside of a warehouse where birds are going in for the seed. But I always like to see photos like this. When you take your photos of the problems, try to get really good photos of the pressure patterns so that we can help you solve the issue. The sparrow trap door, this is a great uh, tool to use. It, it can be very effective. Now, of course, I've got one here in the studio. I'm not sure if we're able to see this uh, even on the overhead camera or not, but either way, I'm going to put it like this. Is this good, Zach? Do not have the overhead on. Okay, that's all right. We don't need the overhead. But the idea is you see these two spindles in the back. Those are two wires where you can actually put food, push food down on there. And then what happens is with this set, as soon as they hit this release, if it's triggered right, then it's going to go down and right away it just traps a bird quickly. The bird is trapped inside here. Another thing that we have, let's see if I have it on that, that last one. Let's see, I'm sorry. No, I don't have it on there. But uh, look at this slide right here that I have. And you see that white box that's on the lid, right? You see that white box. Now let's look at the trap that I have here in the studio. And that's placed right here. You see these little vent holes. What that is, that's a sound module that can be attached of the chirping sparrow. And that sound uh, chirping device that can be added to this um, is, is going to do a good job to attract the birds as well. Whenever, uh, whenever you trap these birds, you, uh, you know, there generally are more birds involved. Now, one of the things that we have here also, I'm going to grab this real quick for you. We have a little bit of extra time. I'm going to grab a, a catalog here. That's all right. And uh, I don't know if any, if any of you don't have this catalog, the Bird Barrier catalog, please 
email Zach. Uh, Zach, go ahead and put up your, your email on this one. Of course, any of our customer care people will take care of this for you. Order a few of these catalogs. Um, and what I'm going to show you here in the catalog, I'm, I'm just going to do this on, on the fly here. I didn't prepare Zach for this. But I'm going to the, the sparrow trap door, right? And I'm going to show you something here. I'll hold it up to the camera. When we trap these birds, we have also what's called the repeating trap. So this, this uh, trap that I showed you right here can fit on top of another trap and the bird goes out through the bottom and is is then in another cage trap let me show you this what i'm talking about here <clears throat> i'm going to hold it up to the camera like this if this is okay <laughs> you see this yeah so it's it's this uh right right here <laughs> Let me get better in the camera view there for you. So what happens when we do this right, the bird uh, gets caught in a trap, and then it, it releases through the bottom into the main trap, and that noisy little sparrow that just got caught in that trap becomes bait for the other, the other family members, and they slowly go through these one-way doors, and you can catch, you know, five or ten of those sparrows. So that's a great system. I think uh, what we'll do is if you can go to our website, uh, you can learn more about that. Uh, let's see here. We have some questions. Uh, let's see. Can you recommend an irresistible bait to sparrows? So first and foremost, what I just mentioned is in that repeater trap, uh, you, you do keep food and water in there that, you know, of course, that is good for the bird itself but when the birds in uh, see other birds getting to a source they will be drawn in there of course seed is probably the best bait otherwise and rather than just right set a trap like this what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to actually put you're going to put like an ink pen across and you're not going to actually have this set to trigger and then you'll put some of the bait around and get the birds conditioned to this trap and used to this trap. And then once they feel comfortable around it, then you're gonna set it and start catching the birds. Another great thing is on the back spindle here is the irresistible bread. I mean, bread is a great bait for sparrows. Toast, you know, if you toast a piece of bread, put it in there, or little pieces of bread, man, they love bread. They're, that's the equivalent of like French fries for pigeons. People ask me, you know, what's the best bait for pigeons? Well, it depends, you know, if they're out in a uh, commercial setting or there's fast food nearby and we know for sure that's what the draw is, French fries, you know, put those in the cage. But for birds, the bread, I would say, is the number one bait that, I, that will work. Also, it, now, if you're, let's say you're in the produce section of a grocery store, you, you want to focus on where it seems that they're eating. Sometimes they're drawn to the lettuce, you know, and if it's lettuce, then we put lettuce in the same idea. You want to get them comfortable with the trap first. You don't want to just bait it first thing, and there's some strategy to that. Um, so hopefully that's helpful there. All right, that's on the trap. Now, I'm going to get back to our slides here a little bit more and just tell you the key to really solving these birds is exclusion. Now, this photo of the Spanish tile is a classic problem that we see all the time. There are all these gaps that they can get into. Now on some of the rooftops you'll see where they put mortar in all those joints. That's one way uh, to do that. I have a customer right now who has mortar joints, but they didn't do all of them. And so the birds are nesting in whatever ones are not protected, but we got to exclude them from those gaps. Another big one is the end caps on Spanish tile roofs. Those need to be put into place, and if they're getting around those, it has to be sealed properly to get those you know, taken care of. I'm going to show you the strategy checklist again. Pressure level, are they nesting? Give me good photos, you know, the best photos up close. 
Sometimes you just see where they're going into. You can't even tell what their nest is, but we know they're going into those gaps. Just so long as you get up high enough to where we can see what that gap is and the measurements of the areas that you want to treat, that helps us to help you with solutions. And then, of course, the Google address. We, we know we can look at the satellite images. That always helps, especially now when we go into 3D mode on a property. It really helps me because now I'm not just going to look at the photos compared to that. I'm going to look around in all angles of that uh, structure to see what else we can offer. As far as sparrow deterrence, we're going to finish up with some deterrents that are helpful. PVC mesh can be, be very effective on Spanish tile uh, roof. Uh, we actually have uh, some custom cut parts called the exit that's part of the solar systems that we have. Those, uh, those uh, custom cut pieces can be helpful. Uh, we, we use these, uh, thank you Zach, he's giving me a sample here. I'm gonna hold up a, a sample of one of these. But uh, this piece, I'm gonna kind of hold it up so you can see. There you go. So you get the idea. What this does is it fits in the, in the, uh, the Spanish tile in a way for underneath solar. But also, of course, these can be cut in half and bent so that they become the end caps on the Spanish tile. These, these are very handy for that as well. Save you time from having to cut those. PVC mesh and then bird slide, depending on the ledge, if they're if they keep getting up on these ledges in part, you know, like we saw earlier, one of those ledges, that can be a good tool as well to use. Here's a sample I have here in the studio. One thing I'll point out with the bird slide is that when it comes to sparrows, it's often that they're on a very narrow uh, ledge. It will only be a ledge maybe a couple inches, and of course. This can be ripped on a, a table saw and cut to whatever dimension needed. But creating this 45 degree angle, you know, the birds just cannot get on this and they'll move away from that surface. That's another good device to use. Also, stealth net, we always come back to stealth net. If we're getting a lot of sparrows in, you can net off the entire cavity area. That may be the more cost effective way to go. And then last, we have optical gel. You know, optical gel has so many different uses, especially on their staging areas. Sometimes what you want to do is not only exclude using the PVC mesh on a little cavity, but if we then on their staging areas leading to that, put some optical gel in for good measure, the combination is very powerful. They get the message. They don't want to get anywhere near there. And that could be a great solution for those. And I mentioned earlier the sparrow trap door. And then, of course, the accessory to the left there is that sound module that comes with it. We also have sensors for these so that it can, uh, it can send you a text if the trap has been triggered. So that way you don't have to monitor it all the time. Two more things that will help with sparrows. I wish we could get more people to install these flap doors. These flap doors can solve a problem instantly. And now we don't carry a flap door. It's more of an industrial thing that you can order. Uh, there are many companies that supply these, but I can't recommend that enough. Now, uh, you know, some people are resistant to, uh, you know, putting anything that impedes the flow, workflow, but you know, forklifts, people walk through these things all the time. They're very common. I think there's a little more resistance lately because of COVID and contaminated surfaces, and I get that, but for the general rule, these flap doors can be your best friend. And how about this? How about this revolutionary concept in bird control, just called the closed door? <laughs> If we could get people to close their warehouse doors, oh man, more and more problems with these sparrows could be solved. Now, I, I have to admit, I've spent a few years looking into this thing carefully, and I'm amazed at the amount of pushback that we get on this recommendation. Now, you in pest control out there, of course, can appreciate this, not just for birds. I mean leaving doors open and gaps even at the bottom. They'll close the door down to a certain uh, gap and leave it open. And of course, rodents and everything come in and out of the doors. 
The door seals at the bottom are very important as well. But those are the uh, basics on sparrows that I can tell you how they relate to the you know, pest bird world of uh, sparrows. I'm, I'm available to take some more questions at this point. Um, I'd love to hear your stories out there. If you've got some war stories on the worst sparrow jobs, you know, type those into the chat box and let me know if you've got jobs coming up, you know, tell me about them here and we'll, maybe we'll talk about them. If anybody has any more questions about sparrows, we have just a couple minutes left. I'll be glad to answer those. Put those in the, in the chat box down there. Yeah, it looks like we're, we're in pretty good shape. How many of you out there watched all six of these in the last three days? Do we have anybody that, that went through all six of these? And we'd love to get your feedback on these, if these are helpful. Uh, you know, we, we do the normal uh, six module system for uh, bird control certification. And we had a lot of requests in the surveys to do more specific information about birds. So it looks like it's good feedback. Yeah, okay, great info, great work, okay. I appreciate that. I'm glad some people were on all of these. Uh, we are, we're going to continue with this. I mean, you know, this is a safe way to teach. <laughs> I'm in a studio. Zach is more than six feet away. We keep our mask on. We sterilize everything. Of course, when I, when I do my presentation, I've, I think it's better for me to remove my mask. Uh, but um, this is a safe way to do it. And by all means, if you have recommendations for classes, let us know. Now, we, Zach, we have a lot more classes coming up. Next week, so, uh, what do we have coming up? We have um, outdoor eating on Tuesday. Okay, so outdoor eating is an area of bird control. It's, it's kind of similar to what I was talking about with these warehouses. And there's an article that I'm in the middle of writing called Controlling the Open Sky. And man, that is the hardest thing. So when we have open sky areas where birds are in the open sky and they get in the restaurant or they go in through the warehouse, you're trying to control the open sky. So that's not a, a, an easy thing. So that's Tuesday? Tuesday at 11 yeah. is, okay. Access equipment is coming Wednesday. Wednesday. And what we mean by that is lifts. We're gonna talk about lifts and safety, ladder safety. And some basic information, that one's not too involved, but there are a lot of people that say, I mean, I've never gone up high, I've never rented a lift before. This will be a good module. Now these modules like this bird, the bird ones, we're gonna put those in Bird Barrier Live Training on Facebook. So if you haven't joined Bird Barrier Live Training on Facebook, ask to join that group because we have a lot of good information that will, you can continue to learn from. The last one for next week coming up is solar. Now, as opposed to these sparrows, solar is an opportunity to make some good profit, not great profit because so many other people do it. There are a lot of solar companies now that offer bird control for the solar panels. <clears throat> but we have over 100 people signed up for that webcast. The last one we had a great amount of people on and they went out and instantly started doing that kind of work and placing orders. We appreciate it. Of course, the point of all of this, I will be very transparent, say, if, you know, the only way we succeed is when you are loyal to us and buy Bird Barrier products. We're very proud of everything that we offer. <clears throat> but as you see, in addition to the products, it's the support and strategy that we want to offer to make us a lot better than the other companies. So hopefully, that's why you're going to use us. We, don't, we want to earn your business, and the strategy that we give you hopefully helps solve that. So the solar, if you, if you want to learn how to, how to get into that business, we talk about the methods, but I also talk about the business opportunities and some insight on what the best companies that are doing the most, how they run their businesses. That's really helpful as well. That's next Thursday at 11, right? That's all I have time for. Thank you to everyone for attending, especially for those of you who did all six. Make sure you get a hold of Zach, if, and he's going to send you the certificate for that, for all six of those. And that, till then, my name is Michael Gallion with Bird Barrier, and we will see you at the next webcast.